Welcome to MX Timeline, where we break down each year in motocross history. This is MX Timeline 1993. Everything that happened in motocross in the year 1993, starting with the first round of Supercross at Orlando. 25 main event gets underway. The early lead belongs to number 43. Really was strong in this class a year ago and learned a lot as he said. He's going to have a problem here coming up. Yeah, right there. I'll say he had a problem. He does the huge triple right into the hay bale and right. I suspect the AMA officials will have a thing or two to say to those two holes away from the field. He can look over his shoulder on the straightaway. He knows what's happening. Bradshaw has the inside line contact. And into the lead goes Damon Bradshaw. Back in Orlando, Damon Bradshaw looking for his 60. Won this race a year ago. That was Jeremy McGrath with the problem. He shoots off. And it is Mike Kudrowski who is there to challenge Damon Bradshaw in his sights. He looks inside, takes the low line. Bradshaw comes back, but not hard enough. Extremely intelligent race here, Dave. He's going to stay out of trouble. He's been close before. Here comes the Here comes this out the window. Oh, Kudrowski's off the motorcycle. He saves it. Third win of his career, his second in a row in Orlando. Round two is at Houston. All the way around the racetrack, sometimes they pay the price. First turn, boom, bang, <laughs> on the... Long way around to get back into the race. 69, Jimmy Gaddis, judgment when he was befallen by this moment. Uh, the the curse of Jimmy Gaddis, who's led a bunch of these things, and something always seems to go. <laughs> Lose it in a Supercross race. He is up and over. The national champion, number one, waiting for the drop of the gate and right to turn number one, Larry Brooks, number 17. Position, and he got there by passing a small army. And I believe that's the first pass Jeff Stanton has made this season. It's between to now or tonight rather than one week ago as Bradshaw got himself out front. Cooper's case, it could very well be in oh, and he flashes the hay bale. The pass right here. Cooper has position. Go for Damon Bradshaw tonight. He has won it again. Round three was Anaheim. A tough track that's going to get to the first turn first. They try the championship event. This week, it's just the Western Riders, Suzuki. And right now, he's putting that Suzuki into the number one spot. He's yeah. there. Now, Gaddis knows he's there. He's trying to storm back. And look how he the 125cc class. Fist in the air for Damon Hoffman, who wins. He'll do the same thing. The gate is down. The Chime Supercross is underway. Stanton's got a good start. Jeff Stanton, aggressive as hell. <laughs> moves in the hurts on the rest of the field. Love that variety of stuff again. So too is Jeremy McGrath. He's narrowed that team. Jeff Stanton, whoa! Shoots to the inside. McGrath makes the pass. It is not the first time we've seen Jeremy McGrath up front. He's led every race. His mechanic, I think, since his victory here. Yeah, won. <laughs> McGrath waving to the crowd. He's confident now. I'm going to style for you folks and our folk as Jeremy McGrath is crossing the finish line Skip the first time in his career the 22 year old former bicycle racer comes out on top of the series standings look at this three points next was Seattle battling for position there's what's wrong with that gate they got to turn number one and Jeremy McGrath is as his teammate Jeff Stanton McGrath is a he said well he's a rookie he's going to fade I think maybe they're now eating their words the last two weeks he started 17th and got to the top five and now as Brad the veteran Cooper is on the sidelines. The rookie Swink is making a challenge on Jeremy McGrath. A touch of the flu had kept him from training, and he could be running out of a gas again. He's actually crossing over in front of Swink. Whoa! Oh. Open. Meanwhile, Jeremy McGrath will take the checkered flag. The said, first. Yeah, man, we did it again. Two weeks in a row. Round five was San Diego. Jeremy McGrath got the start and would lead all 20 laps. Round six was Tampa. Put it on because the gate is down on the 125 number one. Let's see who got away first. For Chad Peterson from Iowa, one of the kids who's never to do battle with Button. That's the battle for the number three. Comes charging up alongside, doesn't hesitate, moves right on by for time, Doug Henry. But look, he messes up. Free night for Chad Peterson gives him his first. He gets a whole 
push out the ranks to see what happens if he does not get a hold. Turn. Let's see who's going to get there first. Stanton is again. Showtime shows that when the game... Kudrowski run him down and not too far off. It's time for us to charge. Dave, I, you know, I don't know what to think except that McGregor Johnson did it. Jeremy McGrath just did it to the field here. And now it's time to celebrate. Next was Atlanta. Look for number 15 on the blood red Honda. Outside. In the second spot goes Kadrowski. We see Jeff Stanton, the top ranked stars of the series, as they work lap one. The and now. Focusing on the racetrack. Now, there's the battle for the number one position. 45,000 Georgians cheer. Takes the lead. Brad Shaw did the whole 20 laps. Jeremy McGrath has done it. And wants to finally pull out that series championship. The champ hasn't worked out that way. Supercross is always filled with surprises here tonight. And um, conversely, a lot. It was time to go outside to Gatorback for the first round of Pro Motocross. A highlighted season from Gatorback, Florida took the early lead. Now, Jeremy McGrath made a couple of passes. The suit was Michael Cray. Those two riders battling each other quickly. The sideline were amazed. Jeremy McGrath was not supposed the to be Second moto, Emig was a DNF. A crash took him out of third time. overall. The winner of the day, Jeremy McGrath. Defending 500cc champ Mike Kiedrowski dominated the 250 class. It was back to Supercross for Daytona. One time in the gate ball. They got it into gear before the gate fell. And look at this, Cooper's on the outside. Difficult and challenging track. But we've got some unsung heroes. Buy him into third place. And it appears that Stanton is running slow. Here are our leaders, Mike Kudrowski going after Jeremy McGrath. And he is really Look at this. He's going to ride that bike if it breaks, so what? He is coming after McGrath. And McGrath was coming up on him. Kudrowski was coming up on him. He started to move, but look at this. Kudrowski in the one. Strength and endurance. He's going to be a factor in years to come. But right now, most important of all supercrosses, the checkered flag for Mike Kradowski. A supercross race. Our congratulations go uh, to all of his family and friends. And here Next was Dallas. Leading in Houston uh, for the West and got it. Pursuing number 86, a 16-year-old California. Henry, Damon Huffman, and uh, running into number four position, Lust. They've each won a race. And Henry told us earlier, he said, I got some amen to make a race. Up. Now, he's winning every week. Three of them. Final standings, Henry Henry has all the Eastern Regional right. Cooper will get field is set. Here we go. It's McGrath, Jeremy McGrath. As they work lap one. Great start for number 12. There. Uh, fortunately, he did not take Lampson with him. He got up around quickly. him. In fact, he's looking back over his shoulder. I, I think, think he's, he's looking for there. someone. Jeremy McGrath wins. McGrath continuing his dominance. Bradshaw's record for rookie wins. It was on to Charlotte. Main event time in Charlotte coming up. Crashers 10, 11. Corner crash when he was hit from behind by Denny Stevenson. Cliff Palmer, number 20. Tasevich was out front and Eric Kehoe was on the ground. He was number 13. Graf wasted no time disposing of Stanton. He did the corner, then he tried through the whoops, and finally passed Matasevich on the next corner. Jeff Emig, who was in the number two position. Craig for the lead. Craig, though, became crash victim, number 14, and McGrath was home free. For McGrath, win number six, a new rookie record. It's a race I've been looking for for a long time. You know, I had to come back from behind, and, uh, you know, I think that proved to a lot of guys that I can come from behind. Next was a double header at Pontiac. First night, Doug Henry wrapped up the 125 East Championship. Guy Cooper made things interesting in the 250 main. Michael Craig got into the mix. got up and was still in the lead.
Damon Bradshaw went down trying to catch Kudrowski. Kudrowski came through the best riders in the world to get the W. Jeremy McGrath dominated night two at Pontiac. Next was Indy. What's he going to do in his last shot at these guys? What he's going to do is get a pretty bad start. Henry. Two different directions, but uh, Henry just... I, Henry won all the rest. And I watch this. Henry just takes a little no by this guy. He's really been rough. Lots of in trouble. Wow. Here's Doug Henry, who has picked himself off the ground. And just a, a jump for two. There it is. Henry, clearly the class of the 125. What a way Second. To Pedersen lost can steal around tonight. And, um, and maybe by dropping him back that far, there's turn. Let's see if somebody can pull that off. Sure enough, Steve Lamson goes out front. Here's Jeremy. The West Coast, who is in the Western Regional 125 CC Championship. And here comes McGrath. He says... Get their opportunity to see the new fours in Supercross 1990. And Stanton suffering. Uh, oh, there McGrath takes the win. So let's take a look at your official top ten tonight. It was back outside for Southwick. Touted as being one of the toughest on the circuit it's made up of the track that creates new lines and new problems for jeremy mcgrath corner number one was a problem number 43 ezra lusk on the same lap and he would set out in pursuit of ezra lusk there was the pass so it was lusk henry and dubach at the end of four laps henry was dogging every move that lusk made first to the inside then to the outside and finally on a big belong to doug henry his first ever championship moto win for more of the same, and they got it. It was an altercation. The second moto, Jeff Emig, the defending 125cc national champ, and a half. The two riders pounded away at the Southwick court outside, with Emig blocking every move. Finally, Doug Henry, moto number two, and Emig would hold on to the number two position throughout the remainder of the moto. Doug Henry crosses the line, he wins moto number two, goes 1-1 on the day for the overall win, the first in national championship the top five. The championship standings after two rounds. Sand track in Southwick, Massachusetts was the site of round two of the national championship CC class. First corner victim, rider number 21. Lampson right the motorcycle. He was okay back into the fray, but rocketed by Dowd in the early going to take over the lead. In third place, rider number three. Then those two riders, Jeff Stanton in the lead, Kudrowski running second, the 250 CC class. Stanton showing the way, Kidrowski going of the 250cc season. It was not that Kidrowski was so close. It was the absence of Damon Bradshaw. In fact, in time to finish in the runner-up position. Here's Mike in the second moto. Here's the start of moto number two, and some things never change. In tow, then Phil Lawrence, Mike Kidrowski running fourth. And they were soon hot on Stanton's tail. Kidrowski disposed of Phil Lawrence for one. Stanton, of course, hoping for a repeat. Now watch this. Kudrowski cut to the inside. He carried that line all the way to that big fall away jump in second. That's the way the moto ended. The overall win went to Mike Kudrowski. After two rounds, the point standings looked like this. Kudrowski. Next was the Pasadena Supercross. It was another 20 laps of McGrath's dominance. Jeremy won the race and the 250cc Supercross Championship. It was on to high point for the outdoors. Still got up to finish third and turned in two outstanding motos eighth overall. First corner out of sight. Big pile up claimed several of the top stars in moto number one. Jeremy McGrath, rider number 15. He slid out a bunch of riders went with him. Moto wins to put himself the moto back. finishes of 1-1 the overall goes to three yep. events down of the 12. Doug Henry on three of the eighth race 250cc national championship motocross point raceway in Mount Morris Pennsylvania. It was Damon Bradshaw's best both motos. He would take a fifth in moto number one and a fourth in moto number two to finish third overall. This is the battle for the number one position as the pair of riders head for the finish line. Mike Kudrowski leading the way. Damon Bradshaw when they reached the checkered flag. It was not quite that close. Bradshaw did finish second with Kudrowski taking the win. Here's a look at the overall finishes at Mount Morris. He's not able to take advantage of the situation. It was back to the indoors for San Jose.
last round of Supercross would be at Las Vegas. Five championship finale. He's got a pretty good start, but not as good as number 86. Has uh, progressively gotten stronger as the season has been. He makes that pass on Lewis, and he moves up one more notch. Meanwhile, up front, Damon Huffman saying goodbye to the rest of the pack. Takes his fourth. Huffman wins the race. Gaddis wins the championship. It's a great mugshot with only number one below you, not a long string of numbers. Oh, yeah, I'm so excited. You know, I just like to thank the good Lord Jesus Christ for keeping me safe. I mean, all the guys at Pro Circuit, you know, I'm just really excited about it. I'm glad that they gave me a chance to do it, and I'm happy that I could win it for them. in Orlando in January. It ends tonight here in Las Vegas. The gate is down. 1993 series coming to a close, and a great start, start for, for Jeremy McGrath. What happened? Well, I haven't seen it. He is gone. We know he's fast. We've yeah. seen him do this before. Well, this one is over. And you know what? Oh, no. Ooh. But Graff, but Graff always the question. When the qu oh, now that was not fair. Brought it up during the race. So if there's any bad luck to be blamed, it's going to crashing. Loses the lead. Now he's tangling with Mike LaRocco. Looks like he's super cross champion before. Plus goes down one more time. Second time of the year again. Huh? LaRocco clips yeah. that bail. Kodrowski all the we're back in Las Vegas, and Jeff Stanton is into the final lap. I mean, it's close, but i got to feel that Stanton's got what he needs. He's here. Team Honda managed to hang on, and Jeff Stanton wins. The season is over. Stanton has won the finale for Morocco. It's time to go back outdoors, which is where we will stay. Suzuki, as Relusk from Bainbridge, Georgia, took the hole shot. Watch this. Bang. Ezra catches the fence front. It was Jeff Emig taking moto number one. The second moto started out where moto number one left off. He'll lose control, and he is down on the ground. He had to pass some 33 riders to get there. The win in moto number two gave Jeremy McGrath the overall anniversary running of that event, and it was Rowski in his quest for the 250cc title. He twisted his clutch lever, bent the front brake. He would have problems with rest of as It's the factory versus the privateer. The factory, as you can be on the gas, with a front brake that... Uh, Continually was locking up. He's out front. He's on the proverbial cruise control. He's had a race. It's just about 50 foot down the track. He took the checker. Second moto, all Mike Kudrowski one more time. He took the whole shot today without a struggle. He lets the Rocco go by. At the head of the pack, Mike Kudrowski. Four races. There will be four races remaining in the series after he takes the checkered flag. There it is, and the series has reached in round five. Here are the highlights as seen on Prime Network in moto number one. Sheik is ahead at this point. There's McGrath. Watch running this. Down. In the number three slot, he disposed of Lusk and caught up to the rear wheel of McGrath. Now McGrath with uh, class. Emig won his first ever national at Red Bud. Just flag. Here comes Jeff Emig. There was just a little fist pump action. Keep your eyes glued to the back of this pack. Wham! Bam! Cycles on the start. All the riders got up and walked away. Meanwhile, walking away, from, said I had enough of that following dust and all of that work trying to pass riders in the first moto. Jeff Emig over the top of the finish. Here are the top five. Jeff Emig finishing in the number Point one. standings. Doug Henry still on top. We'll take a look at the gap. Red Bud Track and Trail, Buchanan, Michigan. The site of round five, Sherwood, Michigan. And Mike LaRocco, who lives just south of Buchanan, right. Michigan. Team Suzuki and had not really gotten the hang of that motorcycle. He scored his first ever 250cc national championship. Morocco. He would finish second in the moto, followed by Jeff Stanton. Moto number two, the killer from Canyon Country, California. Oh, what? He found it. Jeff Potasimich, rider number 12, with another great hole shot. One position. He had a flash of green there, and uh, that green uh, provided by uh, Mike LaRocco. Finish line, Mike Kudrowski with hands raised, takes the win. Champagne Circle was enjoyed by Kudrowski. The roster. Here's the way they finished at Red Bud. Five rounds of competition. Mike Kudrowski, round six of the championship series, was in New Berlin, New York, Unadilla Racetrack. Unadilla long touted as the tipping track in the United States, lived up to its reputation. Kept running and got back into the fray, but he had lost several positions. Doug Henry, meanwhile, having problems of his own. Moto number one, his day was over. Meanwhile, there's the leader, and there goes James Dobb. Meanwhile, James Dobb from England, rider number 100, takes the win. Field is off. Now, hard to tell from this angle who's doing what. James Dobb, Doug Henry was running third, Eric Kehoe, then Jeff Emmett. Same thing at all. We'll make that correction. Meanwhile, Jeremy McGrath out front. Henry, last by to take over the number three position. About ten laps in, Jeff Emig made that move, 
and he took over the lead from made up. He was tired of eating the roost and the dust from Jeremy McGrath. In fact, the championship lead had dissolved in between motos. He dropped back to second place in the standings. With that pass on Jeff Emig, though, he would go on to take the number one position. Checkered flag, there's Emig on the outside. Henry takes the win in the moto. Emig finishes in the number two position. Ship series. Moto number one at Unadilla. A horrendous Damon Bradshaw at this point, and Bradshaw is down. He's going to be hit by a couple of riders. Now watch this crash. Mike Kudrowski taken out by Scott Myers. With the adrenaline flowing, he quickly caught Guy Cooper. Just but don't risk crashing. But Kudrowski bulldozed his way to the front of the pack. At one time, had a huge lead over Mike LaRocco. Well, that lead was gone. And out of gravity cavity, Mike LaRocco awaits. And LaRocco from LaPorte, Indiana, the team Kawasaki. In the second moto, Mike Kudrowski's fortunes were slightly different. Our Oklahoma rider for maybe slacking off just a little bit on that very rough course. Not slacking off at all was Mike Kudrowski. He's had to sweep into the number two position. Checkered flag time. There's the familiar figure with number two. And here's the way the overall honors stacked up. Ohio, here are the highlights as seen on Cycle World. Rider number 43 will take the whole shot, but no one was watching. Up front, it was Ezra Lusk holding the number one position with Jeff Emig in tow. Emig was not going to stay there long. He swept past Lusk. Henry, who had moved to the number two slot, and he was right on Emig's rear wheel. And again, he'll have to start his trek. There's McGrath in the middle, holding down the number one position. Running in the number two slot was Ezra Lusk. Ezra Lusk was having a bad motorcycle day. The second is okay. Here comes Jeff Emig to claim the checkered flag. Second moto win of the day. So overall, it was Emig, Henry, points. Doug Henry is in second place. Just three Boy, points Ohio. back. An opportunity for Mike Kidrowski to wrap up. The riders involved, they're all okay and up and into it, but they're out of it as far as the race is concerned. Property of Steve Lampson. Here comes the checkered flag. Mike Kidrowski, congratulated by his mechanic and hugged. Why? Well, Kidrowski has wrapped up the 250cc title. Just a little bit of frosting on the cake. Kidrowski again blasted. We're uh, involved in the first moto. Kidrowski is headed for the checkered flag. He had absolutely no competition. He looks a little peaked there, doesn't he? Doesn't really look too happy with uh, the way things are going. Reason is, the heat got to him. The crowd cheering and clapping. <laughs> How about that? Kidrowski raises the arm in the air. He's loaded in. They'll take him in for a checkup. He was all right, San Bernardino. Out of the gate and around corner number one, the field was led. A couple of them never got to appreciate that view. Now right on Emig's rear wheel, rider number 16, Doug Henry. Now they're one, two in the series. San Bernardino, that positioning is about to change. Watch this. I don't know, did Henry a 32nd place finish in moto number one? Now that's the reason that Jeff Emig fired right away. But still, that's not what you want to do on a motocross track. And look who finished second, Ezra Lusk. When Ezra keeps the motorcycle upright, I'll tell you, Doug Henry had some problems. It was awfully hot in San Bernardino for the undressing. Now the wind put Henry back into the number one position. In the now here's some home video taken of the crash. That was it. It was pretty violent. Wrench back in a severely lacerated tongue. Don't forget, Kudrowski had already wrapped up the national championship to determine the San Bernardino champion, and uh, that race would pay double points. Took the early lead in the uh, final event, and already you can see Bradshaw is riding a little bit on the ragged side. He was passed by Steve Lampson, rider number 21. That's a spot very long. There's Bradshaw. He gets sideways, end up in the 32nd position. Toward the front of the pack, Steve Lampson was having things his way until Mike LaRocco showed up. He would win the season finale. The result from San Bernardino, LaRocco, Lampson, Lawrence Dowd at the 125cc championship series. Here are the highlights. The network. Moto number one, it was all Jeff Emig. Emig, as a matter of fact, uh, looked behind him a time or two. And in fifth place, number 16, was Doug Henry in moto number two. There goes Emig from the middle of the pack. Emig could have looked around for the closest competitor had he taken time to do that. He'd have seen no one. The series was over, and those riders without 500 cc mounts had to do something the rest of the year. Their talents so toward the 125 class. The talents, though, of Jeff Emig gave the Team Yamaha star the overall win to fourth. So the lead changed hands one more time. Corner. It's a right-hander. Watch what happens.
Mike Kidrowski is at the bottom of that huge pile. If, uh, Mike is okay, and he says, hey, I'm okay, Roy. Get back, do your job. I'll do mine. The Rocco, rider number five. Jeff Stanton, rider number two, holding on to the number two position. Fourth overall in that moto was Mike LaRocco, all the way winning the opening moto of that uh, crash, but there would be a repeat of LaRocco's win. This guy looks red hot. It was Steve box. Lampson and Mike Kidrowski recovered nicely from that uh, first moto, didn't he? They were battling for the lead. However, Mike LaRocco passed them both to take over the number one position. Then came rider number two, Jeff Stanton, and he would finish in that spot. There's the checkered flag for Mike LaRocco, a pair of moto wins. The Creek Motocross Park in Millville, Minnesota was the site of round 10 of the national championship. Champion Donnie Schmidt, who hails from Bloomington, Minnesota. What was Donnie Schmidt doing at uh, Millville, Finish in Minnesota. moto number one was eighth place overall. Not too shabby for a man that's been away from the United States. Motor. Familiar figures, Jeff Emig, but Emig did not stay there very long. As a matter of fact, lead more often than not in the championship series, Doug Henry, rider number 16. But it had rained two days prior at Millville, the track crew at Millville. Anything like that in your life? And the lines change each time the riders come through those sections. Flag bound. He would win moto number two, giving him the overall win for the day. There were so no it was Jeff Emming with a 2-1 score, wrapping up the overall. The series moved east for round two to Millville, Minnesota. Camera and throttle and hoping to go in that direction. You have to aim it and, uh, you know, get Conditions for Healy to handle. Then all of a sudden, Mike Kidrowski pulled to a stop. He was up on top of a hill overlooking the mechanic's signal area, and they were watching him, and he was Mike LaRocco from the Port, Indiana. Morocco takes the first moto win. Number two, Jeff Stanton. At the tail end of the pack, there are some riders. Morocco makes his bid just a little bit too early. Loses control of the Kawasaki. Morocco goes boom. Boyd getting hit before you get back into the fray. But Morocco was looking for a championship in his 500cc. Number two, and would you believe this was Stanton's first overall win of the 1993. Give him second overall for the day. On Prime Network, here are the 125cc highlights. Followed by Emmy, Ryan Hughes, Todd DeHoop, Ezra Lusk, Ezra Lusk. Then came Jeremy McGrath. A few corners later, and Emig was gone. Still on the opening lap, the front end washed out of him, and he would work all the way up to the number four slot before the moto was over. Number 16, Doug Henry taking the checkered flag. Moto number two, Gaddis had captured the 125cc Western Supercross number one position. Now, toward the end of the moto, Henry had company. His teammate, Jeremy McGrath, was camped on his rear wheel. It would be camped on the rear wheel of the leaders. Jeff Emig, all the way from the back of the pack, had moved up to fifth. Now here's the finish. There's Doug Henry and McGrath holding off Robbie Rayner. They finished that float. The overall win going to go to Steve Lampson, rider number 21. He'll be followed by LaRocco. Way very long. Here's Lampson out front. There's LaRocco. Here comes Kidrowski. You see is uh, Steve Lampson going back to fourth place with uh, Mike Kidrowski taking the number one. They would finish at the checkered flag. The surprising thing here is that uh, Mike Kidrowski took the win rather than handing it to his teammate Mike LaRocco. LaRocco was just four points ahead of Stanton in the championship chase. Up winning the title by a couple, that move would have come back to home. Team Kawasaki in the pack. Now, when the field sorted themselves out, Morocco would pass Jeff Stanton. Watch this after the pass was made. Can you believe that Stanton saved? Look at this. The motorcycle is perpendicular to the ground. He hits on the front wheel. Save that near disastrous endo. At the checkered flag in moto number two, the uh, overall positions in uh, Binghamton. Morocco. He closed the gap and won the championship by 19. Ezra Lusk would be at the tail end of the pack. Todd DeHoop was the leader, followed by Rayner, then Swink, then Emmy. One. He was content to follow for a while, but when the opportunity presented, Doug Henry whipped the throttle up and went for the glory and the gold. He tried to... When Raynard went wide, Emmy cut to the inside off a jump to take over the number three position. He kept the momentum up and swept by Doug Henry Lost to Raynard, then to Hoop bobbled, and Emmy swept into the number one position. Henry in second, watch this. Henry overcooked a corner and shot off the end of the track to the number two position. Emig took the win. Let's take a look at the points difference. 480 after the first moto. That's exactly what Jeff Emig needed to win the championship. The pack. Now coming up, you'll see where Doug Henry is. There's Henry. Two riders as the moto progressed, worked their way through traffic. Henry was never out of sight. Rainers holding down the number one position, being chased by Ezra Lusk. Championship contenders began dicing through traffic. Henry caught Jeff Emig, and with the moto win, would come the overall victory.
championship was still up for grabs, but just barely. With that checkered flag, Doug Henry was declared the 1993 125cc national champ. Finished second overall. Doug Henry was third overall with modal finishes of 2-6. And uh, I know I had a lot of fans there. I'm glad I was able to win the championship. To drive that thought out of his mind and drive it away, he did. Wonder why Kudrowski made that pass and put his teammate who was fighting for the championship position and sandwiched between those two riders, Mike Kudrowski. He did not stay there. He moved up to challenge Jeff Stanton. Stanton coming into this season finale, the way was clear. He did not want to risk that title by uh, taking an unnecessary risk. Here is the difference between the two riders as we head toward the season finale of seven. Off the line, it was rider number 21, Steve Lampson. Third will make quick work of Jones. There's the pass. Jones drops back to the pass that is being made. Mike Kudrowski sweeps around the outside of Steve Lampson. Rocco, he tries the outside of Lampson. Nowhere to go there. He's going to get Lampson, though. Before Apparently, though, there was no smart money on this race. The Rocco rockets into the number two position. The 125 title was wrested away from him in the final events of the season. He had a huge point lead, but lost it all. It's going to happen until Mike crosses that checkered flag, and there it is. Mike LaRocco is the 1993 500cc national champ. Mike LaRocco on winning that title. A big hug from Dad in the world of motocross. Here's the way they finished at finale, the final standings. Mike LaRocco with a... In 1993, three riders enjoyed the fast track to victory. It's time to head over to Europe for some MXGP, starting with the 125 class where Pedro Tractor would be the 1993-125 world champion. Remy Van Rees is in for rider Ashkenazi on Suzuki. Hangs him out. That's the last thing he wants currently. In the corner now, and here comes the new world champion. <laughs> the world motocross 250 champion in 1993 would be Greg Albertini. Move up to 250 cc for the second time here in Italy. Is this a sign for the future? But if you're out in front, you've got a clear track ahead of you. Rob Herring finishes in seventh. How does Albertine do it? Schmidt, because they didn't like the way he barged, but it wasn't long before Greg Albertine took the lead. Falling back down, Albertine takes the checkered flag. Albertine is to be crowned the new world champion. His God was with him the whole way round. Jackie Martins would win the 500cc world championship in 1993. From Martin to Martins is having a crack on the big four stroke, sliding all over the track. Jackie Martins, the face of the lanky Belgium. As they come through, Martins beginning to close. Martins, yes it is. The Asbana of Jackie Martin's got you have to have a Grand Prix at Namor. It is Martin's day. Martin's then the hero of the crowd gets hoisted onto his shoulders. He now In 1993, there was one USGP at Bud's Creek. And a real family affair. One or two of the American riders, of course, turning out. Kodrowski. Also getting a pretty good start. So with Stefan Everts out in front, Kodrowski and McGrath, here they come, 82 is McGrath, Kodrowski eventually goes through to get second place in the first race, McGrath gets third place. Very unusually, Greg Albertine ended up biting some dirt in Bud's Creek. The winner of race two was Mike Kodrowski, and first in race three. But the winner of race one was Stefan Everts, but the US Grand Prix overall went to Stefan Everts, something nobody thought would have been possible. Austria would be the location for the 1993 Motocross des Nations. The 1993 MXDN was very competitive as it came down to Team Sweden, Belgium and the US.
Ultimately, it came down to Mike Kidrowski. He showed the world he was the man. Team USA won by one point over Belgium. Team USA won their 13th straight MXDN, a record that stands the sands of time. This is MX Timeline 1993. Everything that happened in motocross in the year 1993. We'll see you in 1994.